Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Uh, you didn't think you'd, I'd stay away for a long time, do you? Uh, thing is, you know, sometimes I just don't feel mm, led of the Spirit or motivated to do Bible studies. Well, this one I do. This Bible study is going to be called The Great Deception. I guess the great deception of the end times. The Bible has a lot to say about the end times. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of Bible prophecy in the Old Testament. And people won't even bother to read it. There's probably more old prophecy concerning the end times or latter days in the Old Testament than there is in the New. But, hey, you know, they people say, well, you know, I'm a Christian, a New Testament Christian, but so they don't read the Old Testament, but, hey, they won't read the New Testament either. So what is the great deception? Well, let's read about the great deceiver. But, uh, all right, I did a study on Revelation chapter 12, and uh, but we're going to go over it a little bit again. Revelation chapter 12, starting in verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's you, that's me, that's all of us. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Who's the accuser? Satan. Which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they, that's you, that's me, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Who's that? That's Christ, people. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Do you love not your life unto the death? Would you be willing to die for Christ? He died for you. That is the ultimate test of faith. When you are willing to not deny Christ and are willing to die, that is faith. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Do you know that Satanists actually teach and believe that God is incapable of destroying Satan? Because they say, well, you know, if God could destroy Satan, he would have done it a long time ago. Not exactly. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, which is angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What? 
we got to keep the commandments of God? Uh, what's that? You know, in there's a lot of stuff going around about, oh, you know, Torah keeping, law keeping, but what is it that Jesus wants us to do? Well, in John 14 and verse 15, Jesus said, if ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. But what commandments? Huh. Well, let's see. What, what, what commandments? And I'm laying a foundation here. I know that those of you that listen to me on a regular basis probably heard this a thousand times. Uh, so let's take a look. In the book of Matthew, chapter 22, in verse 36, somebody asked Jesus this question, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What about circumcision? What about keeping the Sabbath? What about not eating pork? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So when these Torah keepers say that Paul is a false apostle and he changed the law, no. Jesus, which they, they seem like they're allergic to that word. They'll say, Yeshua HaMashiach. No. So let's take a look at something else. Is there a backup verse for this? In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, you know, this is that Paul that they... A lot of these people, these Torah keepers, really hate. In verse cha Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Isn't that what Jesus said? Love the Lord and love thy neighbor? Yeah. This is... Paul teaching the same thing Jesus taught? I think so. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, meekness. Didn't Jesus say that the meek would inherit the earth? Oh yeah. Faith, meekness, Temperance against such there is no law. But what do these Torah people want to do? They want to get us to keep the law, the Noahide laws. But if you're led of the Spirit and you have love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Nothing about circumcision, nothing about keeping Torah or the Sabbath or the Noahide laws. But how? What? What? What is this? The the fruit of the spirit. How do you get the spirit? Well, let's find out. How do we get this Holy Spirit? John chapter three. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. He was a spiritual leader of the Jews, the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a denomination of the Jews. Verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night. Why did he come to him by night? Because he didn't want to be seen and recognized in the daytime. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, 
he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay. Well, do you know your body is composed of 93% water? You ever heard the expression, oh, pregnant woman, pregnant, getting ready to give birth, and she goes, oh, my water broke. Hmm. And, of course, you've got John the Baptist that did baptisms in the water, right? But Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Now, you know, what's interesting is the, um, the New Testament was written in Greek. And yeah, I know the Torah people will try to convince you that it was originally written in Hebrew and then they mistranslated it into the Greek. Don't believe that, people. The word for spirit in the Greek comes from the word pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. It's where they get the word pneumatic, as in pneumatic tools, air tools. Air. Jesus said in verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth. What is wind? It's air. Moving air. The same word for air is the same word for spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? In other words, aren't you a leader of the Jews? And you don't understand what I'm talking about? That's the Bob translation, by the way. Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. See, Jesus left his heavenly home to come down here to dwell among us. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. And there will people that will tell you that Jesus was just some anointed rabbi, Jewish rabbi sage. No. Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. He was God in the flesh. He was the only sinless, acceptable sacrifice that God the Father could send. Nothing on this earth, this sinful, filth earth, could be the perfect sacrifice for sin. In Genesis 22, we read something very interesting. Now, I have an entire playlist on God's covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob, who became called Israel. Many, several, a number of hours of study. But let's take a look at Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these days that God did tempt Abraham. In other words, he's testing him. He's trying him. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. 
And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. Now, isn't that interesting? God had another, uh, I'm sorry, Abraham had another son named Ishmael. But here God says, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. You see, Isaac was told of Abraham that he'd be the promised seed, not Ishmael. Ishmael was born of the bondwoman in the flesh. Isaac was the son of the promise of the Spirit. Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, the third day, hmm, didn't Jesus, after he was crucified, wasn't he raised up from the dead on the third day? Oh, yeah. See, there's a lot of symbolism in the Old Testament and New Testament. I've heard that the Old Testament has been called the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is called the Old Testament revealed. But, hey, if you don't have time to read the Bible and you want to watch TV, hey, that's up to you. But if that old serpent, the devil and Satan, deceives you and you do something that the Lord doesn't like, if you're lucky, you'll only get spanked with judgment. But if you commit a sin that will not be pardoned, like taking the mark of the beast, you're going to get more than just judgment. You're going to get wrath. And believe me, Satan has been around for thousands of years, and he's a lot smarter than you and I are. The only thing that I know that's good is comes right out of this Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures. And oh, by the way, if you want to know what I believe, I believe the King James Bible and the Geneva, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation chapter 22. And if you want to know my doctrine, there it is. But I also adhere to the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. And don't let anybody ever tell you that the Catholic Church gave us the Nicene Creed. That's a lie. Nicaea was a city in Greece. The New Testament was written in Greek. You know, if it would have, if the Nicene Creed would have been called the Roman Creed and came out of Rome and was written in Latin instead of Greek, maybe they'd have a, a leg to stand on, but they don't. The Catholic Church did not give us the Nicene Creed. That's another lie of the Vatican and the Pope, which I don't listen to the Vatican, and I don't listen to the Pope. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here, uh, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. Now listen carefully. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Good question. Where's the lamb? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Think about that. Did God provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering? Yes, his only begotten son. So they went, both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wooden order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him 
out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. You see, God was testing Abraham. God already knew what Abraham would do. But you know, I bet you Abraham didn't know what he was due. Can you imagine that going through his mind? You know, I'm going to kill my son? Huh? And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Now, I want to make a point here. The angel of the Lord, the word angel basically means messenger. Now, sometimes angels are angels. Sometimes angel means a messenger. But pay attention. Stay with me now. There's a lot of Bible scholars that will tell you that the angel of the Lord was Christ in this particular instance. Listen carefully. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, listen carefully what the angel of the Lord saying, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Now, could any mere angel, a creation of God, say that? By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord? No. A created angel could not say that. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. You see, this angel, the Lord, is probably pre-incarnated Christ. You know, I actually did a study on that, if you're interested. But, um, you know, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. Can Who can bless but the Lord? Can an angel bless you? I don't know. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Are all the nations of the earth blessed because of the Jews? Think about that. Who's the people that have blessed all the countries of the earth? Who sent missionaries with Bibles, dug wells, taught people how to plant crops, fed the world after natural disasters? The Jews? I think not. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to beer Sheba. I wonder if Sheba had some good beer, right? Beer Sheba? Yeah, I don't know. Forget it. Don't quit my day job for a comedian, right? And Abraham dwelt at beer Sheba. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also born children unto thy brother Nahor, who's his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram, and Chased, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jiblaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his concubine, whose name was Rima, she also bare Teba, and Geham, and Fahash, and Maka, I guess. Just remember, Rebecca, 
Rebecca was going to become Isaac's wife. Ooh. All right, let's go back to John chapter 3, verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, Nicodemus, right? How shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever eternal life. For God so loved the world. Does God love the entire world? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Isn't that interesting? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Maybe that's why the Hebrew Roots people want you to believe it's yet. Yeshua HaMashiach. Because they don't believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus. And they want to want you to do circumcision and keep the Sabbath. And 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 Jesus said, if you know, Paul said, if you're you're those are of the Spirit, there is no law. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light and isn't Jesus that light? Oh, yeah. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they were wrought in God. Ooh. All right, we're going to do James chapter 2. I love the book of James. I call it the book of daily living. You know, um, James had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. I would dare say he knew Jesus very well. James chapter 2, verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons? For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come all in also a Poor man in vile raiment. What's raiment? Clothing. Vile raiment. I mean, you know, smelly old clothes that are torn to shreds, right? And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. No, that's not sodomites. Gay meant happy. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, you know, go sit, go stand over there in the corner or, or sit he, here under my footstool so you can smell my feet. No, 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 no. You know, are ye not then partial in yourselves? Are ye become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken or listen, hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Uh, has anything changed in the 1900 years since this has been written? 
No. You go to a church. Oh, I'll tell you what. You see somebody wearing expensive clothing and, and having a lot of jewelry and watches and Rolexes and gold rings and fancy necklaces and diamond bracelets and stuff. The women, you know, and and the, the pastor and the deacons will, oh, come sit over here in the front row. And, you know, they'll fawn all over themselves. And, and the ones that come dressed in a t-shirt and torn blue sh blue jeans, they'll say, oh, well, go sit in the back or, or stand in the corner there, you know. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? And what is that? What By what name do they blaspheme? Is it Yeshua HaMashiach? No. It's Jesus. Verse 8. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Didn't Jesus say, love the Lord and love thy neighbor? Verse 9. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced, convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that are, that are judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Yeah, people, when you don't show any mercy, you're going to get the same thing from the Lord. Verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say, he hath faith. Ooh, haven't you read that? Oh, just, you know, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But didn't Jesus said, a man must be born again of the Spirit? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? You wouldn't even feed or clothe your a brother or a sister in the faith? What? You're going to send them away hungry and naked? And you're going to tell the Lord you had faith? Really? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. That's not saying that you're saved by your works. Your works are proof of your faith. Oh, yeah. Your works, what you do, will reflect what you believe in your heart. Verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Oh, yeah. Do the devils believe in God? Oh, yeah. Sure they do. Absolutely. But their works are evil. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Abraham? Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Yeah. What you do is proof of what you believe. 
seest thou how perfect, I'm sorry, seest thou how faith wrought by his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said, saith, Abraham believed God, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Are you God's friend? You see, faith in the Old Testament was how people were saved. They weren't saved by keeping the law. When a Torah keeper tells you that in the Old Testament they were saved by keeping the law, they're liars. Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Faith. Faith is what gives you righteousness. Not keeping a Sabbath, not circumcision, not keeping the law, not the washing of cups and pots and pans and, and abstaining from pork. Abraham had faith. Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way? And if you don't know that story, you need to read the Old Testament. If memory serves me correctly, that's in the book of Joshua. Verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead. Ooh. Didn't Jesus said we'd have to be born again of the Spirit? For as the body without the Spirit is dead, so faith, faith without works is dead also. Not keeping laws. Charles Spurgeon mentioned the following. He said, John Newton used to tell a whimsical story and laugh at it, and laugh at it too, of a good woman who said, in order to prove the doctrine of election, and, and I quote, Ah, sir, the Lord must have loved me before I was born, or else he would not have seen anything in me to love afterwards. Boy, I tell you what, <laughs> isn't that the truth? Uh, he chose me before I was born or else he never would have chosen me afterwards and he must have elected me for reasons unknown to me for I never could find any reason in myself why he should have looked upon me with special love so I am forced to accept that great biblical doctrine and that's from Spurgeon. Isn't that the truth? God loved us before we loved him. In John 3.16, it doesn't it say that for God so loved the world. Well, does God love the whole world? We've, that's, what, that's what the church teaches. God loves the whole world. He just loves everybody. But what does Malachi chapter 1 say? See, this is on deception. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Malachi 1.1. 1, 1. Hi. All right, so the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons, the dragons of the wilderness. And what's a dragon? Satan. All right? God hated Esau. And of course, if you listen to the black Hebrews, they'll try to tell you that you whitey are Esau. 
So, all right, in Romans chapter 8, we read the following. So if God doesn't love everybody, doesn't he love somebody? Oh, yeah. In Romans 8.35, we read the following. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And you got the modern church world teaching up. Don't listen to that. We're going to be raptured out of here. We're not going to have to suffer for our faith. The great deception, people. The great deception. Now, is it just Satan that deceives people? I think not. Read Romans chapter 1. This is such a powerful chapter. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, I believe that, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for, for you all. You all? You didn't know Paul was a, a southerner, did you? I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, and I'm not making fun of Southern people. I, I was born in Kentucky. Kentucky is one of those interesting states. Um, I was born in Louisville. Some people say Louisville. But um, you go to that part of the state, and everybody sounds like they're from the Midwest. But you go to the southern part of Kentucky, and everybody sounds like they're from the south. And uh, believe me, I've got nothing against uh, Southerners, and I'm not mocking them, believe me. Um, so I lived in Tennessee for a couple years, and Kentucky, and a few other places. So what can I tell you? Uh, let's see. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And let me tell you something, people. You go to the south, there's a church on every corner, just about. I'm kind of exaggerating, but you go to the northeast, eh, it's not the same. You know, at least a lot of people in the, the small southern cities, they still have respect for each other in a lot of ways which is something you don't find in the Northeast and in the West, like California. 
I'll take a small town southern state any day over uh, California or the Northeast. Verse 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might be a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end, ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not, now I would not have you ignorant, brethren. Ignorant means you don't know something. Doesn't mean you're stupid. When you were six years old, you were probably ignorant of uh, calculus, which is a higher form of mathematics. I'm still ignorant of calculus and algebra and a lot of other things. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hither uh, to that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation that everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And just remember something, people. In Revelation 2.9, Jesus says, I know the blasphemy of those that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Just because somebody calls themselves a Jew or somebody calls themselves a Christian doesn't make it so. For it is the power of God unto salvation that everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of, righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. All these people that say they're atheists, and, oh, we, we believe in evolution, and they, they all you got to do is look around. I mean, you know... <laughs> A computer, a desktop computer, is far less complex than the human body. And there's not a person in the world that would tell you that a computer evolved over millions and millions and millions of years. And it takes just as much faith to believe in evolution than it would for an a, a uncreated God to create a human body with all the cells and DNA and RNA. I mean, it's just, you know, it takes just as much faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in a creator. Let's faith it. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Oh yeah. Come judgment day, when they reject Christ, the sacrifice, the Son of God, they're going to be without excuse. They're not going to have, well, God, you never told us. Yes, I did. I gave you the Holy Scriptures. You didn't bother to read them. You watched 57,936 hours of television in 15 minutes. 
and you spent zero time in the Word of God. Zero. But God, in, in, in college, they taught us that evolution was true. Oh, yeah, your professor, the one that I sent to hell, he told you? Okay, yeah, that was real smart of you to, to trust a college professor. Yeah. So that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. What's vain? Worthless. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Isn't that what happens in the book of Revelation? They, they, they take an image of the beast and, and make a mark, 666. Oh, yeah. There's going to be an image of the beast that's going to talk. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God gave them up. You know what that means? I mean, God gave up on them. You know what it means when you give up on something? You quit. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Oh, you want... You want to be, you want to, you want filthiness? You want to dishonor your own bodies that God created? God will let you. God will give you what you want. When you want sin more than you want God, he'll give it to you. He'll let you have it. And he'll even deceive you, making you think that you're fine. Oh yeah, you're going to find that out. But when you skid on your hands and knees and repent and turn from your filthiness and you seek God with all your heart and you want the Lord more than anything else in this life, you'll find him. He'll find you. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You ever see lesbianism among animals in nature? No. You ever see homosexuality in nature? No. Yeah, I know male dogs will pretend to hump each other. I know they'll do that. But they're not really doing anything. They're just playing around. They're not, there's no, I've never seen a dog penetrate another dog in the wrong place, two male dogs. I've never seen it. And I've been around dogs almost my entire life, except for when I was probably under six years old. But we've had, my dad probably buried about 20, over 20 dogs. We've had probably 20 dogs in my lifetime. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. You know what recompense means? Payback. 
means payday people. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Do you know what reprobate means? It means total filth and uncleanness. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Not Satan. God did. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Oh, isn't that the truth? They'll debate you. Oh, God wouldn't do this. God wouldn't do that. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God. Despiteful, proud, oh, gay pride, that's right, the LBGT, whatever. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, when they, they know the judgment of God, they know it. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You know, in John 5 and verse 14, now you can read the whole chapter if you want. Jesus healed a man who was lame. And it says, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee? Wow. All right, in the book of John... John chapter 8. Oh, I love, this is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Now, you know what's funny? Everybody will point that Rome is built on seven hills. Well, guess what? So is Jerusalem. But they won't tell you that. The churches will not tell you that. They want to hide that from you. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees, denomination of the Jews, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. And Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So Jesus, with his finger, he's writing something on the ground. Hmm. Now, the woman was caught in adultery. Okay, uh, which means either she was married or the guy that she was with was married, but the Pharisees didn't bring the guy, did they? No, they just brought the woman. What happened? Where's the guy? I wonder if that's what Jesus was writing on the ground. Where's the man? Was he one of them? Was he one of the top rabbis? Was he, who was this guy? And how come they didn't bring him? I mean, they caught her. You know, do you know how many times Jesus called them hypocrites? A lot. Are they being hypocrites here? Oh, yeah. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. 
So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. You know, one of these days I want to find out what he wrote on the ground. I, I want to know. I, you know. And when, I'm sorry, and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Neither do I condemn thee. D didn't Jesus said he came not to condemn the world? But the world's already been condemned. All, the world's condemned already because they believe not Jesus. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Woo, I could read this whole chapter. You should read this chapter. If you think that the people, just because people call themselves Jews or God's chosen people, you need to read this chapter. The whole thing. But I'm not going to because we've already gone an hour. Now, my longtime listeners, you know this verse very well. 2 Chronicles 19 and verse 2. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, seer is just an old name for prophet. Before they were called prophets, they were called seers because they could see the future. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat was a good king. He had joined himself unto King Ahab. Ahab had a wife called Jezebel. She was evil. Ahab was evil too, but Jezebel was the power behind Ahab. Ahab wouldn't have been probably half as bad if it wouldn't have been for his wife, Jezebel. Matter of fact, it, didn't there a, a false prophetess in the old new, uh, book of Revelation called Jezebel? Oh yeah. And said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? You see, the prophet asked the king Jehoshaphat. He joined himself to King Ahab, who hated the Lord. Jehoshaphat was a good king, but yet he was going to help an ungodly king that the Lord hated and who hated the Lord. And he asked, Shouldest thou Thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Wherefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord? Do you know that God's wrath is upon those that hate the Lord? For those that help those that, that hate... Let me explain. God's wrath is upon those that help those that hate the Lord. Should we help those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? Think about that. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Wherefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord? Think about that. The next time you see your churches fawning all over those that hate Jesus Christ. Think about that. Oh yeah. In Psalms chapter 7 and verse 11, Psalms 711, 711, right? Open 24 hours. God judgeth the righteous. Did you know that the righteous are judged? Oh, yeah. We're not under wrath. We're not under condemnation. But we're judged. Oh, yeah. 
Let me tell you something. I have been spanked so many times my behind is still sore. And I'll tell you what, I'm tired of it. Uh, the Lord's almost killed me a couple times. Matter of fact, he saved me from dying more times than I can count. Maybe one day I'll do a testimony, but you know, my, my story is not important. What's important is the story of Christ. That's what is important. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry. God is angry with the wicked every day. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. In the book of Ezekiel, probably one of the most neglected books in the Bible, we read in Ezekiel 3 and verse 18, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his in iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. You see, we have an obligation to warn the wicked. What they do with the message? Hey, that's up to them. Ezekiel 33, 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Here's a verse, uh, a few verses for the pre-trib rapture people. You want to, I, I, I read this and I'm thinking of TBN and the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. The 700 Club, right? Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 20. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows. Wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls whom ye hunt, to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord." Because with lies, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Oh yeah, just believe on Jesus and you're saved. Once saved, always saved. Eternal security. Just say a 30-second sinner prayer and just keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about getting born again. Don't worry about the fruit of the Spirit. Just believe on Jesus, just like the devils believe. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way, by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now remember we were talking about Jehoshaphat, and God's wrath was upon him for helping the ungodly? Well, here, right here is a reference to King Jehoshaphat helping King Ahab, the wicked guy. We read in 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 20. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall? Fall? 
yeah, fall down dead. That he may go and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And one said on this manner, another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Do you know the Lord will deceive people by putting a lying spirit in the mouth of the false prophets? The Lord allows this. He does it. All right, this is going to be the end of part one. We're going to do a part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, 